ओके तो नमस्ते आप सभी का काल दिस इज सी एस अंकल कांस्टिया एंड आई वेलकम ईच वन ऑफ यू इन दिस अमेजिंग सेशन ऑन स्ट्रेटजिक फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट आर यू रेडी टू लर्न समथिंग न्यू देन लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन चेक द ऑडियो वीडियो प्लीज ऑडियो वीडियोस प्लीज एंड इफ इट्स ऑल वेल देन लेट्स गेट द बॉल रोलिंग ओके गाइस यस ऑल वेल प्लीज कंफर्म यस सर ऑल क्लियर ओके सो एज अ हैबिट एज अ हैबिट व्हाट वी विल डू इज एवरी बिफोर स्टार्टिंग एवरी सेशन व्हाट वी विल डू इज वी विल क्विकली रीकैप हैव अ रीकैप ऑफ व्हाट वी डिड इन द अर्लियर लेक्चर एंड देन टेक इट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम देयर व्हाट से राइट आई थिंक दैट विल बी द राइट अप्रोच सो दैट you will be able to recollect everything what was done in the last lecture which is very much required and then from there step by step we will take things forward okay guys chalo so yesterday or for that matter last lecture tell me what did we start with so first we started obviously with my introduction but that need not be revised so we started with understanding of how the whole sfm structure is going to be when i am going to teach you so how am i going to teach you i am going to teach you structurally by ensuring that sfm is divided into phases sfm is divided into phases and we are going to divide this subject into four phases we are going to divide this subject into four phases right okay so what are those fa four phases so from now on you know uh the fact that you are my student you studied from me by default the phase culture should get in right so you will be able to identify if someone says that okay my phase 1 25% is over you will be able to connect that okay okay where that person has studied from then we have the phase 2 then we have the phase 3 and then we have the phase 4 are you able to remember all the topics of the phases are you able to remember them will you please tell me what are the four i mean three topics that we we are going to cover in phase 1 correct one it is going to be a mutual funds second it is going to be portfolio management and third it is going to be security sec valuation so security valuation this is going to be a part of your phase 1 then we will be starting with phase 2 tell me what are we going to start in phase 2 what will we be covering in phase 2 correct so the phase 2 will be totally dedicated towards forex and derivatives okay what will be your phase 3 correct it will be corporate valuation and mergers and acquisition corporate restructuring so corporate valuation and then we have mergers and acquisition and what will be the fourth phase and that will be theory so will you leave everything in option in theory never you cannot do that we just understood in our last lecture that how important theory is institute is very smart by ensuring that they are putting theory as a part of every main question so every main question the sub part c of 4 marks 4 into 6 24 marks is a theory question so it becomes almost compulsory theory of 20 to 24 marks is going to be asked in the examination so obviously when we know it pre hand let's do it properly so this theory will comprise of lecture chapters like security analysis risk management then it will have concepts like securitization financial planning so on and so forth so that's how the whole phase is considered all right guys so i hope we are clear with this again when you are revising this is how you are going to pick up your chapters so when you are revising for your examinations phase 1 done phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 so what i have essentially done is utilize the concept of kaizen costing in sfm so kaizen means little little little, little things we will keep on doing and those little little things will add on and become something humongous right so this is what we will be the strategy for our sfm cool guys so phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 understanding uh, understanding is what we took then we moved on to the paper 
pattern part then we moved on to the paper pattern part so how is this paper pattern worked out how is this paper pattern worked out so this paper pattern consists of six questions of which question number 1 is basically compulsory having 20 marks and it will be a 8 plus 8 plus 4 and as regards the other questions are concerned so between question 2 to 6 you have to select any four again of 20 marks and attempt accordingly again this 20 marks bifurcation can be 8 plus 8 plus 4 uh, can be a 10 plus 10 can be a 4 into 5 whichever way the icai wants to put it doesn't matter to us as far as we are doing it thoroughly acha also one more thing the reason of ensuring all phases are covered thoroughly is because we realize that every 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 phase is important and every chapter in that phase is important so i hope we are clear till here everybody please confirm yes guys sure great okay then cool so this was our phase 1 uh, sorry this was the understanding of phases then we moved on to the paper pattern we are clear with our paper pattern then i gave you a whole gist of all the chapters uh, as in of all the things that we are going to cover in the chapters so we will be starting with a motivational quote then we have the analysis of how important every chapter is in terms of the past trends that have come then we have a study mentor study mentor is going to be very important when you are going to revise so please take that study mentor very very seriously okay so here if if i just open this study mentor then in that case uh see i'll just show this to you that whenever see i am teaching a particular topic so as soon as i am done i will put a tick mark here as soon as i am done i will put a tick mark here right so suppose if i am done then this will be a tick mark then obviously when you are going to revise you will also put a tick mark here till the time these three tick marks are there in your every chapter every concept please do not even think of giving your papers because i don't want you to give it just for the sake of it when we are doing it with whole intent we need to ensure that 80 or more is what we can focus because this is a subject which can get you there right which can ensure the bridge of clearing your group 1 examinations then obviously if we have time phase 4 i mean fourth revision fifth revision is what we will also try and cover so please use it to the best uh, possible available extent then you have the preview now in that preview plus uh formula sheet you will have all the previews as in what we are going to cover in this chapter so again this will help you when you are revising things then you have the formulas available here so formulas are also at one place plus in your book what i have put is something called as student notes in your book in your notebook in your textbook i have put something called as student notes now what we are going to do in this student notes let me tell you whenever we are doing any topic say for example for mutual funds we are going to solve around 40 to 50 sums can i say that every alternate sum there will be new adjustment or new things obviously in final ca final there are so many things to learn so every adjustment that we see or a new formula or any formula that we are doing all of that let's write it in the student notes so after preview when you will get the book you will see after preview i have kept at least 5 to 6 pages blank why i have kept them blank so that whatever question and answers that we are doing and all the important points of that particular question we can write in those students notes so that when you are revising first you will have the preview then you will have the formulas and then you will have the student notes written by your hand itself so yes it becomes easy for us to revise but 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 the responsibility of the student notes is not going to be on me it is going to be on you so what i mean to say is whenever i am teaching a particular sum or any particular concept and you feel that it should become a part of student notes right for example sir, at times there is a hidden adjustment for debenture interest just giving an idea right when we do accounts there is a hidden adjustment of uh, debenture interest so what is the situation when that hidden interest is there so we can write a note for that so when we revise we know that okay this note was important because it is a hidden adjustment likewise whenever we are doing any particular sums 
you have to ensure that wherever you feel that yes sir this is important please write it in as a part of student notes i will do that but that is your responsibility you have to remind me right that's the advantage of having a live right you have to advise me that sir please 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 you have to make it remember uh, that sir we have to write it there will you do that everybody will you do that yes do you promise me if yes then definitely uh, we will have some very good notes by the end all right guys oh, oh. cool so okay so with this the student notes point is also clear and then obviously theory examples uh, sums are always there so that should not be a problem so what i mean to say is the material that is being provided to is all exhaustive i will ensure that in terms of concept clarity i am going to you know ensure that everybody is clear every question so that part is done so now you please ensure that you buckle up your socks and give your 200% do not slip yourself in the comfort zone because that will be a recipe for disaster which i definitely don't want okay guys chal now let's quickly revise what we did yesterday and then based on that revision i will connect you to our first chapter of the day and let it connect automatically now what did we study last time last time i spoke about the japanese economy how the japanese economy even though have the best of how the japanese economy have the best of innovations have the best of cost management techniques so you will find the best innovations in japanese economy you will find the uh, best cost management techniques in the japanese economy but still cost management techniques but still why and that was one single reason that their gdp growth has been stagnated or what we call as japan is going through a phase of stagnation for almost 30 years and the only reason that this happened was improper monetary policies the only reason this happened was improper monetary and improper fiscal or what you can say financial policies right so obviously as a chartered accountant we know that boss we need to ensure that we have the top level we have the top level understanding of monetary policies because if we don't then in that case this is what can it can result into even though you are best in other fields but one small mistake and you your economy is screwed up not for one not for two not for 10 not for 20 for 30 long years we don't want that to happen especially for india so tomorrow if you have been made the rbi governor tomorrow if you have been made the finance minister you know it should not happen that you take our country to this level you will ensure that it only grows and grows the gdp grows and grows by 10 12 15% So for that, what we are going to do now, we are going to discuss. Second example that we took was a example of Zimbabwe. All of us, for all of us, Zimbabwe is a backward nation. But I told you, 1985, this was not the case. 1985, the Zimbabwe economy was even better than U.S. economy, guys. Yes, but. but 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 there were some health and food crisis that happened us uh, zimbabwe took usa loans and then started unwanted unlimited printing of currency and that is where this unlimited printing of currency resulted again into a disaster called as hyperinflation such that the whole economy is suffering for the last 20 years yes you heard that right for the last 20 years so we realize the importance of uh, you can say uh, economic prospects that a company or economic decisions that a company should take see how connected how closely knit the economic and financial decisions are that's the reason i always say that it's not only one finance knowledge that you need to have you also need to have the overall economic idea and for that boss you need to go through the economic times on a regular basis so i hope all of you will do that now 
taking things forward from here now taking things forward from here i made you for one day one month one year i made you the rbi governor i made you the who whom did i make you i made you the finance minister the rbi governor of india who is now going to take a decision we realize that the japanese stagnation happened to control the inflation and in order to manage that inflation things got berserk so was the case with zimbabwe as well in order to control the inflation they started printing more money to repay the debt also but again it resulted into a disaster so basically inflation if not controlled properly results into a very very bad viraling spiraling effect so now you have been made the rbi governor congratulations and you have to now decide what decisions have to be taken the first thing that is going to happen in your economy in your country is inflation which is common inflation can happen but now tell me what are you going to do in this scenario <clears throat> there is widespread inflation there is widespread inflation in the economy what will we do think and answer don't be very very instinctive think and answer and again as last time see the last time the best thing about you was all of you were participating uh please ensure that those things continue it will be helpful for you only right and even i will get a boost to teach you even better so tell me now we are suffering through inflation you are the rbi governor tell me what are you going to do ladies and gentlemen i'm waiting for your answer tell me tell me mhm mm aha uh -huh. everybody has to answer otherwise i'm not going to then if if there is not going to be a two way communication trust me it is going to be a boring lecture which neither of us wants very nice satish babu a uh, very good siddharth mega lakshmi padmavati very nice so 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 what you guys are answering manisha ji ji amina ts okay so now what you guys are answering is i am telling you that you are saying sir raise the interest rate but before that can i say we need to now need to keep a check on liquidity we need to keep a check on liquidity do you remember my example suppose if see usually inflation why does inflation happen i'll tell you inflation happens because there is a high demand low supply obvious there is a high demand low supply so obviously if you are in demand you will increase the price but remember one other part of the coin also that even though there is high demand but if there is a if there is a liquidity crisis that even though high demand is there still if there is a liquidity crisis it will not result into inflation right we understood that so can i say inflation will increase but again it is dependent on liquidity so we need to control the liquidity so here we came to know that liquidity has to be reduced in order to control the inflation liquidity has to be reduced if we need to control the liquidity what will you do now you have said and that is what i will take inflation is increasing so you need to liquid control the liquidity if you control the liquidity in a inflation scenario can i say inflation will curb down because inflation is giving up given a boost up by liquidity if there is a liquidity crisis inflation will automatically be controlled so how do you, in liquidity has to be reduced logically i am clear so how do i reduce the liquidity in the market how do i do that correct you will increase the bank interest rates you will increase the bank interest rates what will that do oh, how, how does a bank interest rate curb the liquidity can you tell me so can i say bank interest rates sir if it is increased then in that case people will stop taking the loan i was getting the loan at 5% now i am getting the loan at 8% higher interest i have to pay no man i don't want any loan no no when the rates will go down i will again take it why should i take it now so as a result when i stop taking loan as a businessman as a consumer obviously the money that i used to have at my disposable level is now not there if the interest rate was reduced i will take the loan when i take the loan i have money when i have money the 
you know possibly the demand in the market would increase and inflation would again increase but now that is not possible because increasing interest rates will make the loans costlier and as a result the liquidity will to a very large extent be controlled be reduced but what will that do to the stock market increasing bank rates will reduce the bank share price why so why the bank share price will reduce can anybody tell me why the bank share price will reduce correct sir for obvious reasons see if our banks major income is earned through interest banks major income banks major income is earned through interest interest that the bank earns on the loans that we take now as a businessman as a personal person i am not going to take a loan if not i am not going to take a loan i will not pay interest to the bank if i don't pay interest to the bank bank is not going to get revenue if your revenue goes down then obviously the share price of your particular script will go down now if this happens there is another repercussion that will happen and that the real estate price will also go down bolo bolo tell tell yes or no can i say real estate share price is also going to reduce the answer is again yes why because again people are not taking loans if people are not taking loans see majority of real estate money is loan money only let's accept it right nobody in today's scenario nobody takes a home without a loan right so if you are going to take a loan and it's logical also the rates of interest are logical so you should take a loan that's there's no nothing wrong in that so real estate now obviously if i am not taking a loan i will not be able to invest in real estate projects if i am not investing in real estate projects obviously their demand will become an issue and as the result as a result real estate share price will fall down the spiraling the connected effect will be seen in others infra share prices will fall down cement prices will fall down because now if real estate comes to a halt the connected cement industry will go for a halt the connected steel industry will go for a halt so all of these will fall all of these will fall but 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 there is a particular stocks which will not fall everybody felt that oh sir my god this is going to happen the whole industry is going to fall the whole stock market is going to fall no not the whole stock market there will be few stocks which will increase which ones which sector stock will increase bolo bolo tell tell correct darshan solanki is absolutely right i was waiting to listen that word called as defensive stocks called as defensive stocks so they will be impacted what are they will increase what are defensive stocks basically your pharma basically your information technology basically your fast moving consumer goods right right because increase in interest rates will not affect the pharma industry will you take stop taking medicine if the interest rate goes up and you are down with fever will you stop taking medicine no sir no relation so pharma industry will go as it is now what will happen is this see how it is indirectly going to increase pharma industry see obviously here based on increasing interest rates i realize as a fundamental analyst i realize that boss this market is going to down going down for bank bank shares real estate shares cement shares uh, steel shares so what i will do is i will remove the money from here who wants the uh, share price to go down so i will remove the money from here and what i will do is i will start investing in this pharma stocks because at least it will start i will start investing in this pharma it fmcg stock because at least they will not fall at least they will not fall at least fmcg uh, you know biscuits and soap and all of that will always be there are you understanding guys please yaar please keep on replying yes everybody
so even though even though the pharma's products demand may not have increased but even if it is stable what will happen is people will start selling these prices and the shares of at least pharma fmcg will be increased and that will result into a upward trend for these companies now take an example of an it can i say it is a wholly export oriented function everybody exports everybody exports as regards it stocks are concerned correct they i mean the it industry is basically service oriented export oriented now what will happen to the dollar see here because of inflation the value of rupee will fall down what i could have bought for 100 rupees one year back now i cannot uh, purchase the same thing i will need 120 rupees to buy it. so can i say value of money goes down so value of dollar will increase basically can i say dollar will increase no yeah obviously more connection we will see when we do the forex chapter but it's obvious that if money is value is falling down dollar will increase if dollar is going to increase export oriented businesses will be positive and therefore it stocks will also increase right now if the value of dollar increases it stocks positive yes pharma also we export a lot so that is also positive right fmcg will remain stable at least not got down so even if it remains stable it will still have a positive impact now what will happen to the gold what will happen to the gold see remember india imports gold and if you are importing gold and dollars cost has increased so your import cost will increase if your import cost is going to increase the gold as far as indian context is concerned the gold prices will increase the gold prices will increase hey samjhgde are we clear everybody acha what will happen to the crude oil same crude oil is also what we import so even if you import crude oil the overall crude oil prices are going to increase but what will happen to the last thing and that is your bonds always remember bond has a inverse relation with the interest rates and i explained you last time so bond valuation will go down if the interest rates increases because new funds is where public will go into and as a result people will start selling their old bonds and the bond valuations will fall are we clear everybody are we clear with this whole scenario are bolo bolo chal chal Yes, 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 sir. Okay. So this is how. See, remember this for the rest of your life. This is always going to. This is always going to help you. Whenever you have to analyze, this will always help you to analyze your stocks in the best manner possible. All right, guys. So this is where you all are very clear how the whole system. of the stock pricing works and now you can start analyzing it at least at a little little level and you'll feel so much joy when it actually works when you actually see it working right now 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 based on what we are doing we realize one thing that boss based on based on what we are doing we realize one thing that yaar if you smartly invest then there is a lot of money that can be made do you agree to this or not if you smartly invest in share market then you can easily make a good amount of money do you know the share market had given a cagr cagr what is cagr i will explain you in the next chapter but it has given a cagr at the rate 15% year on year which is phenomenal but you should know at this people are there who have also lost everything because they were not studying this they were based on a hey, please purchase this share a hey, please purchase this no you have to do your analysis you have to use your brains you are a professional and then you will invest and see the fun right if 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 i can give you a best example the best example would be a wipro share right if your grandparents would have purchased the wipro shares in the year 1980 at the rate rupees 
you wouldn't have been listening to this lecture because by now you would have become a owner you would have become a owner of rupees 500 crores keeping 10 people like me with instead of listening to the lectures neither did this happen to you nor did this happen to me so it's okay correct cagr is compounded average growth rate even newton lost money in share market is what chaitan is saying wow what an information uh, so Wipro shares right and you can watch it out and there are other shares also you, you know Wipro is there Infi is there Reliance is there T Titan is there we could have minted money like anything if if we would have taken the right things at the right time you know so it becomes very important for us that it becomes very important for us that we keep on investing at the right place at the with the right stocks you agree with this or not yes or no see there is always a positive and negative of everything of every market if we look at the positive and if we keep on doing well then definitely this industry has huge prospects right agreed okay now 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 what i am saying is this see and seriously, yeah, we need to invest right things at the right time. You know what happened? A uh, few years back, I would say somewhere in the year, a few years back, so probably in 2019 or something, I and my mom were having a discussion. My mom showed me something which made me angry and cry like anything. My mom said, said that, you know, your Nana, Nana, you understand what is Nana? In, in Hindi, Nana means maternal grandfather. Okay, maternal grandfather. So she was proudly saying me, you know, when I got married in 1985 or something, your Nana, maternal grandfather, gave me rupees 20,000 cash. And I have kept that cash as it is. I said, Mommy, what happened when it was demonetized? She said, I changed the notes. So these are those change notes. But it is the same money that your Nana gave and I kept it as it is. I was like, Mom, are you serious? Why didn't you invest it? I was like, no, no, no. What invest? What would have happened? Then I gave her this example that Mom, at least you would have purchased a Wipro shares. 20,000 Wipro shares in 1985. Oh my God. Would have made me a valuable son of 800 crores. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yes. You would have invested in gold, taken this 20,000, put it in gold. At least it would have been 10, 20 crores, at least 50 crores, yaar. Mom, what have you done? Are, no, no, yaar, this is grandpa. Are, what grandpa? Use this money in proper investment. Do you know this? Do you know this, mom? I, I told her that in 1958, mom, 100 rupees 1958, in the year 2023 is rupees one or even lower. I was like, oh, is it? I was like, yes. Mom, this is what inflation does to your money. So we need to invest in proper places. You could have called Sankat, sir. Is what you will say, no, no, to your parents. Sir, and right now you would be revving supercar, which I already have. So that's okay. So, in 1958, a 100 rupee note is now, probably after 50, 60 years, is has no value, valueless. 1 rupee is what? Valueless. In fact, it is less than 1 rupee, the value. So, as good as valueless. Just imagine. Oh, thank God, we would have lost SK, sir, if your mom had invested in Wipro. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay. Chalo. Anyways. So, basically the point is that yeah, we should invest in a proper manner. And that is what was the need of the R. So, okay, I and my mom had a discussion and we finally understood the importance. And then she told me, Chalo, no problem. Now, at least you start investing my money. Let's see what happens when I'm like, okay, mom, no problems. I will start whenever it is possible now. Now, what happened is this. Let's try to understand. So this is where our communication ended and we thought, yeah, chalo, hai. now a lot of you will call me and say that, sir, seriously, Wipro gave so much return. I'm like, yes, you can check out on the internet. You can actually start calculating and you will realize that, yes, this is happening. 
now people start telling me that sir why don't you do investment for us sir you are professional even in the first lecture you made us understand so many things so with your knowledge sir you can earn so much money through stock market itself sir do it for us no i'm like yeah i can do it but do you have money like no sir not yet and then one fine day you hear a commentary you hear a commentary say on 1st of december saying mitro i will put 15 lakh rupees in everyone's bank account mitro and my god you are so very happy 15 lakh rupees is coming in your account hey first things let me tell you that i am not politically connected to any party okay yes because we are understanding economics and finance so geopolitical things will keep on coming in between but that does not mean i am favoring or disfavoring any party okay because if now i say something and then you'll pick that word and say or hey, sir you are favoring this party that party no man i'm not interested in all of that but 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 one fine day you get a call mitra 15 lakh rupees in your account less 30% tax is concerned for that so you will get 15 lakh rupees and this will be tax free now tell <laughs> okay sir wow if that happened let's imagine that happen so now you get 15 lakh rupees in your account but you get this on 1st of december and 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 you have your attempt you have your attempt when you have your attempt on in the may in the upcoming may you have your attempt in the upcoming may you have your ca final attempt now tell me 15 lakh rupees is received the first thing that your parents are going to do what your parents will do will 15 lakh they will immediately create a fixed deposit they don't want any risk and see two third of their life is almost over let's be realistic so they one third life they don't want to go into risk they want it to go like okay we want certain fixed amount of money we'll enjoy our way but our to two third life is left no your to two third life is left so you can take good decisions wise decisions instead of investing the money in fd you will start thinking why not invest these money in probably shares i may invest some of money in bonds i may invest some money in gold i may invest some money in real estate why can't i do that so like yes why not but 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 there is one issue there is one issue when have you received this money you have received this money on 1st of december when is your attempt upcoming may tell me for may if you have started studying in december all of us know that the last 4 to 5 months boss 4 to 5 months of ca final before ca final examinations all of us know that it is so crucial to study very hard do you agree to this or not how many do you know in the last 4 to 5 months how much you have to study at least at least 10 to 12 hours a day whoever comes and tells you that are no 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 10 to 12 hours are not required you can even clear the examination without you are studying for 10 to 12 hours is faking i have seen 10 years of teaching industry 5 years of myself being into a student no person without studying for 4 to 5 months continuously for 10 to 12 hours at least will ever be able to clear his this humongous examination assuming he is giving both the groups so if people tell no at times it happens your ju seniors will come hey what to study man is so easy man leave this in option man are forex derivatives is what i left that in option i still score 60 do not listen to that and he or she may be lucky enough are we are we lucky enough our luck is so good our luck is so good that if out of 100 questions we do 99 questions and go the 100th question will come in the examination that is our luck <laughs> so if that is our luck it is impossible for us to clear the examination before at least studying for 10 to 12 hours 14 hours a day and in order to study for 10 to 12 14 hours a day gross so, effectively i want to study for 10 to 12 hours a day but gross i will have to put up 16 hours only then i will be able to you know manage it because there are so many distractions so many things that are going in our head that the distractions are already so many so i will have to put in 16 hours of effort then i will be able to effectively study for 10 to 12 hours yeah 
right 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 but 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 now what will happen if you have to study so hard from 1st december to may and you are also planning to invest this 15 lakh rupees how is it possible is it possible or not the answer is sir practically now doesn't seem possible sir but this is a 6 month time december january february march april may in 6 month the 15 lakh rupees can possibly become a 30 lakh also we have seen this year in wipro we have seen this year in wipro there were phases when wipro shares doubled month on month 6 months yearly so this can happen here also in our case so now what do we do unfortunately we do not have the time to invest and let's be fair we are still studying so we do not even have the professional knowledge let's be realistic we do not even have the professional knowledge to we do not even have the professional knowledge to manage all of these shares bonds and everything so now what do i do with this money and all of you obviously all of you have got it all of the people who are watching me now you all of you guys have got 15 lakh rupees all of you are studying together in a library but you want to invest but you are not able to invest because of lack of time because of lack of professional knowledge now tell me what will you do all 200 want to invest now you will think of some person who can help you invest this money at the right place earn a good return for you and in that return he may ask for some fees can you can you see can you are you able to recollect some person who could do that for you are you able to do that yes 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 omg yes 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 i have time i have the professional knowledge hey will you do that yes so what you do is all of you meet in the library and there are say 200 people who are watching this lecture so say 200 people 200 people will now think that chalo boss all of there are at least 200 people in your library so you think let's do one thing let's give this 15 lakh rupees to sankal sir but then somebody told that why to give full money to him let us keep at least 5 money 5 lakh money with us secure in some fixed deposit that if something happens to the other we'll still have something with us so all of you then decide ke chalo let's be realistic and invest 10 lakh rupees now all of you approach me and you tell that sir this is our issue what can we do i am telling you why not pool this money why not create a pool of this money why not create a pool of this money and give it to me and give it to me i am your prof i will become your professional investor i will become your professional investor but sir for this how much will you charge planning for webucate mutual fund sahi hai ah <laughs> so 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 see this is what started happening you came to me and you told me sir why don't you invest for us i said that yes i will do that but i also need some motivation no motivation you all told me sir no problem sir whatever money that we are going to give you of that 2% will be your fees so how much money you are going to give me say for example there are 10 lakh people uh, 10 lakh rupees per person into 200 people are there so how much money i will get tell me 10 lakh into 2 20 lakh 2 crore and 20 crores so 20 crores is what i will get this basically will become sankals the professional investors asset under management this will become asset under management and what we will do is with this asset under management you will say sir your fees will be 2% of aum your fees will be 2% of a u m which is your asset under management i am also happy 20 crores 2 percent is how much can i say 40 lakh i am more than happy in earning 40 lakh correct so what happened here what happened here is there are people there are collective people who want to invest who have a want to invest where probably in shares probably in bonds 
probably in uh, uh, other things like gold real estate all of these places you want to invest you want to invest but 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 what happens is you do not have the time you do not have the professional knowledge but you want this money to go from 15 lakh to 30 lakh and it is possible and this is how the whole concept of mutual fund was born yes so people wanted people had surplus money and a lot of people had a lot of surplus money but they did not have time to invest because you will focus on your business or this not possible you will have to focus on your business you do not have the professional acumen in fact even if you have professional knowledge but you don't have time still it will be a failure it happened with me when i uh, started investing okay so it was a going good then i got job in jp morgan then i started investing at a very good level and initially when i joined jp morgan initially in the three months i had no work as in there was little bit training but i would good give a good amount of time to researching a stock market and purchasing and selling but then in every in every job there are good days and there are busy days then came for the next six months there were very busy days for me because my training was over and for the six to nine months i was not able to focus on what investment i had done and I had made approximately 35% return in the first three months and in the next six to eight months, all of my returns was wiped off. So I had professional knowledge, but I also did not have time at that point in time and everything was wiped off. So you need a combination, boss, you need a combination of time and professional knowledge, correct? And as a result of this, people started thinking what should be done. And in the year 1774, in the year 1774, a person called Van Katich from the Netherlands, Amsterdam, he came up with this fantastic idea wherein he told that guys, you want guys you want to invest the money i will spend my time on it i have a lot of professional knowledge of this industry you give me a particular fees for it and whatever return after deducting my fees all of that will be passed on to the investors and this is how the concept of mutual fund was born way back in the year 1774 <laughs> yes this is the real history of how the whole concept of mutual funds was introduced then mr van katich got a good response from public and he introduced a fund and name that fund some some other name is there i'll just see it and i'll tell you name that fund as Indgat marked Maukat marked that fund was in English translated called as unity creates strength and this is what mutual fund stands for unity creates strength correct and that is how the whole system of mutual fund was born are you understanding guys and 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 see what happened was this huh? see how small small things connected even one to 250 years back this person when Katich told the whole uh, the whole uh, Netherlands people that see if you are willing to invest because you have surplus money you want to invest you don't have the time I have the time I have the professional knowledge you are ready to give me a fees what he did was he told that from 1st of December to 5th of December you can invest in my mutual fund and what is the name of the mutual fund unity creates strength or something called as indrat mokat marked whatever it is in their language in english it is called as unity creates strength right this is the period when he told that if you want you can come and invest in mutual funds if after 5th of december you come if after 5th of December you come, then I will not be able to give you any mutual fund. You will have to purchase it from the market. You will have to purchase it from the market. So this, 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 this 1st to 5th December basically is what you call as NFO, something called as new fund offer, something called as new fund offer. 
ए समझ गुड़ू एवरीबॉडी सो एन एफ ओ वॉट इज एन एफ ओ एन एफ ओ इज न्यू फंड ऑफर विच इज प्रिवेलेंट इवन टूडे बट मिस्टर वैन कैटिज इंट्रोड्यूस दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इन सेवनटीन सेवेंटी फोर प्रॉब्ली टू फिफ्टी ईयर्स बैक एंड ई टोल्ड आफ्टर फिफ्थ डिसम्बर सपोज इफ इफ सपोज सम ऑफ यू फील दैट नो नो आई विल गेट द सैलरी ऑन टेंथ ऑफ डिसम्बर आई विल गेट द सैलरी ऑन टेंथ ऑफ डिसम्बर सो ऑब्वियसली यू वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट but first to fifth you cannot invest you don't have the money on 10th of december if you want to purchase you can purchase it from the you can what you call a secondary market or from outside whoever public have the units of mutual fund you can purchase from them if they are willing to sell their units at whatever price the demand and supply decides so after 10th of sub december if you want to purchase then you will have to go in the market and there has to be a seller and if he sells to you at whatever price that you mutually decide are we understanding and this basically system went on to be called as closed ended system closed ended system why closed ended because you can purchase only during the time of nfo if you do not purchase is during the time of nfo you will have to go in the external market for purchasing these same units if you go in the external market to purchase these units then in that case that basically fund is called as a closed ended fund yes just imagine this concept was introduced probably 250 years back then what happened was these things started gaining a lot of popularity uh if you know netherlands is a part of europe so then from netherlands it went on to uk from uk it spread on to full of europe and finally the americans were also made aware of this and in the year 1924 in boston a fund was established called as massachusetts fund uh I not write the full name. I have the full name. I'll give it to you. But a Massachusetts fund was instituted, and they realized one shortcoming of this. What was the shortcoming of this? That if you want to buy or sell any shares, you will have to go in the outside market. Now suppose if tenth December I get my salary and I want to purchase units of mutual fund, and there is no seller of mutual fund, I will not be able to purchase it. right so they realized this issue and they told that they told that 1924 boston mit fund told to the whole world that boss you can come any time to purchase the units you can come to any us any time to sell the units so where you don't have to go in the external market buyer and seller you directly go to the mutual fund house of which the mutual fund is and you directly go and purchase from them any time of the year any time and if you want to sell and if you want to sell again you go to this mutual fund and again any time of the year you can go and you can sell them because this was so open the name that was given to this scheme was called as open ended scheme and in this as per this scheme as per this scheme unlimited what did i say unlimited amount number of units could be issued by the mutual fund house whereas in case of this nfo when ketich had decided that i will give only 2000 units limited units in that duration if afterwards there is any buying or selling it happens in the outside market the overall 2000 units that were issued remain intact as it is but it is not the scenario here 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 what happens i can purchase any time i can sell any time directly with the mutual fund house directly with the mutual fund house and this ladies and gentlemen this ladies and gentlemen was at that point in time also called as a open ended scheme and it was so widely accepted by people that 50000 invested in this mutual fund became 390000 in a span of one year which is eight times increase which is humongous I mean eight times increase it usually takes at least 5 to 8 years minimum 
this is a company which managed it in a span of one year so was the high level of popularity hey guys are we understanding from where did we start from where did where are we moving uh, how did the flow connect to the history and how did it actually work up or you want directly me me to teach directly okay chalo let's start with the formula mutual fund is equal to net asset value equal to market value of investment divided by outstanding number of units do you want it that way or you actually want to understand it logically with what actually happened how did this all fall into place and then you want things to go at the right manner you tell me i mean you you want it i can directly start with the formulas because today a lot of people have this habit of going for shortcuts right so see that's not my at least style of teaching so i don't like it you have to understand no, why you are doing what you are doing so we need to do this yes we will also do the formulas we will also do that but once we know all of this the concept once it is embedded in our head we will never ever forget in our life like the case was here also this this concept that we did in the last lecture i can assure that you will never ever forget this thing why because we did it logically you answered it so i thought that yes even for mutual funds i have to connect you logically but if you you know people have their different perceptions and way of uh, doing things i hope this is yes yes thank you so much great everybody is very giving a positive answer this is interesting this is the best way perfect 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 thank you for this assurance so that i can keep on continuing delivering in this manner everything we will get to the basicest of the things and definitely we will take it to the next level right guys so this is what happened with mr van ketich so now what you will do this 200 people will create a pool give it to me i am called as the professional investor also called as the asset manager right 20 crores is the asset that is being managed by me and this 20 crore asset is then invested a return is on my fees is deducted and then the return is redistributed amongst the unit holders which is how this whole concept actually began which is how this whole concept actually began right i hope all of us are absolutely clear clear that you know how did all of this work up now what i have done for you guys is yes you will be happy to know i have written all of this at one place so that so that see this is obviously historical things even if you don't write it's okay this may not come in exam but you should know what happened and how did it work so i have written all of this ready for you we can just now go through this get a surety of yes whatever is been taught is clear in our head so when did it all start it all started in 1774 when mr v k when ketich introduced a fund called as unity creates strength that is what the whole objective of a mutual fund is he visualized it 250 years back guys just imagine 250 years back this guy visualized that yes mutual fund is what unity creates strength right you want to invest in a lot of options but unfortunately you don't have the time and knowledge so why not give it to a professional who would do it for us at obviously a stipulated fee because he also is working hard for us uh no 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 don't worry you don't have to note it all of this will be shared in your google drive all of this will be shared in your google drive in the folder written notes so tomorrow a folder will be made written notes in that each and every word that i have written here each and every word that i have written here will be shared so don't worry at all all right guys so that what we can do is we can spend more time in discussions we can you know spend more time in understanding the concepts solving part we will do don't worry don't worry for that but at least these things can be discussed not written is also okay right sure so yes so what was the objective of the of mr van ketwich it was small investors can diversify that was the whole intent so if small 
investors want to diversify into various asset classes this gives a very good opportunity to them so what he started was uh, that total he had issued to 2000 units let's assume in indian rupee he had told that 2000 units he will issue at 1000 per unit and then he told if the fund was full the only way to gain access to the fund was to purchase units from an existing unit holder and this system is called as close ended you cannot purchase it from when catwitch you will have to purchase it from outside the market from some other unit holder who is willing to sell his units and you are willing to purchase those units called as the system of closed ended system hey guys please are we clear what is a closed ended system yes then tell me what is the open ended system where any time of the year you can purchase and sell mutual fund units directly by communicating with the mutual fund houses no restriction on the number of units got it also what he did was even at that time again 250 years back this great personality maintained annual account statement accessible to unit holders see for today also this happens for doing this we have a institution called as sebi securities exchange board of india it's a very strict institution and it's a very good institution and they are have been established to ensure that every mutual fund maintains annual account statement which is accessible which is transparent and you can watch where they have invested where the mutual fund has invested the money who are its uh, uh, you know the fund managers what are their qualifications everything is available online thanks to the transparency regimes established and put in place by sebi sebi is a very very good organization strict and very clear in its thought process right so this obviously helped a lot this transparency helped a lot there are in fact very if you also want to watch some idea want to get some idea of some fund there are many websites i'll share it probably in my later lectures value research online.com morningstar.in these are what i use ikraanalytics.com these are the uh, websites that i use to analyze my investment in mutual funds correct dina so this in close ended we have to go to the secondary market to buy and sell but in open ended ah no tension right right so that's how the whole system worked he also maintained annual account so that people can invest without with transparency without any tension in their head but obviously this was an issue this was an issue what was the issue there has to be a buyer there has to be a seller the prices should be known demand supply should match which may not happen all the time and uh, you can say a uh, a shortcoming of one thing leads to development of new things like sole proprietor had a shortcoming giving rise to partnership partnership had a shortcoming giving rise to private limited private limited had a shortcoming giving rise to joint stock joint stock had some issues giving rise to llp and now even one person company is there why because in order to overcome shortcomings of one another right in order to overcome shortcomings of one another yes you will find a lot of things on money control app also but the ones that i told are specifically for mutual funds and they are more detailed yes chalo guys got it so that's how the whole system then evaluate evolved that okay till 1924 this was how the scenario was but in 1924 they realized that no we need to come up with something called as open ended funds to continually what was the whole intention to continually issue and redeem units and this fund in a span of one year earned from 150000 to dollar 390000 phenomenal growth phenomenal growth got it now just to give you some perspective of statistics of the assets under management just to give you an idea uh websites i'll give you don't worry i'll dictate to you if you want you can write down uh value research online.com is there morningstar.in is there 
ikra analytics so these are few websites you can write down if you want yes written it again as i told you it will be shared so you can write it anytime later so so this is how the whole system then evolved just some statistic sharing with you before we move on to some new things specially wrote these statistics so that you also know uh, things that you are studying are so relevant from a practical standpoint that probably after you clear your ca examinations there is such a humongous scope in these things globally the top aums top mutual funds having highest aum are blackrock dollar 10 trillion dollar 10 trillion india's whole india's asset under management can you guess is hardly dollar 0.5 trillion dollar 1 trillion max and look at this one just one fund having 10 times more value in asset under management this is high level of uh unutilization of indian uh mutual funds chalo vanguard is there vanguard has asset under management of dollar 8 trillion charles schwab 7.9 trillion It's huge numbers in india it's sbi hdfc icici prudential which have this is in rupees ah uh, 6 lakh 47000 crore rupees 1 lakh crore probably is 1 trillion but this is rupees so you have to convert this into dollar so again divide by what 80 90 so very less is what but 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 this also shows that there is a huge scope see india india in terms of aum to gdp has only 16% means if your gdp is 100 your investment in mutual fund is only rupees 16 but world over the gdp is 100 the investment is approximately 74 rupees just imagine this look at this diversity in india if you have 100 rupees you will invest 16 globally if you have 100 you will invest 74 your aum to market cap again 6% 33% almost five times is the difference just to give you a perspective just to give you a perspective uh, i just wrote down the gdp of various economies i just write down wrote down the gdp of various economies if you would have seen that of late uh, india crossed france and is under uh, is amongst the top 7 gdps of the world right now if you look at india's gdp it is good 3.7 dollar trillion but if you see the gdp per capita you will realize that there is a stark issue gdp per capita of usa 69 dollars 69000 dollars usa uh, china 12500 dollars japan 39000 germany 50000 uk 47000 france 43500 but india is only 2200 what does this mean gdp per capita means your person individual person just has 2000 rupees see see it is like this i made this house here suppose we have surpassed france so our gdp is higher than france so france this is suppose france home gdp this 10 lakh is the gdp it has but this 10 lakh is to be distributed only amongst 10 people but as far as india is concerned instead of 10 lakh our gdp has increased to 11 lakh but we have to distribute it to 100 people so per person our value is only 11000 as compared to france which is 1 lakh per person so yes in totality our gdp is doing good but on a per capita level let's accept it there is a long way to go there is a long way to go okay i'm sure we will definitely improve in fact i just saw the top 50 countries whose gdp per capita is lower than india and there were only two countries which i could found one was pakistan which had 1500 and other was nigeria which had approximately 2100 or something other than them everybody has a better gdp per capita so obviously hopefully we will improve in that and things will work better so this was just to give you some idea that how it works yes also one more thing that now 
the mutual fund is taken very seriously especially after having two brand ambassadors like dhoni and sachin whom we can trust as regards anything last 5 years cagr is as i told you 16% market is giving so we will obviously want to invest in a market which gives us a 16% annual growth rate right so let's see what it works so let's what does mutual fund do it lets you pool your money with other investors to mutually buy stocks bonds and other investments is everybody clear with this definition bolo bolo tell tell is everybody clear with this definition yes or no you don't have to learn it but can i say it comes naturally okay what is the total aum of india it is 39.5 trillion in rupees convert this into dollars and you will realize we hardly have any investment in aum investment in india got it chalo now i want to again reiterate on the fact that are we clear with the whole concept of this close ended and open ended fund chalo let's understand let's see whether you have understood it or not tell me in open ended is there a lock in or there is no lock in and in close ended is there a lock in or no lock in can you freely lock in means can you freely buy and sell shares any time you want or not so where do we have a lock in where do we have a no lock in write down come on everybody has to write down in open ended there is yes lock in or no lock in okay mega lakshmi has given a correct answer she says it's a no lock in here yes lock in here okay good good chalo now i want to understand where the liquidity is high where the liquidity is high open ended or close ended where the liquidity is high think and tell absolutely correct the liquidity is high in open ended no liquidity means any time you want to liquidate convert the mutual fund unit into rupees you can do it directly go to the fund house tell them boss i want money they will give it to you so can i say open ended is liquidity yes close ended liquidity no are you understanding a hey, samanvita siba is saying open have lock in no lock in in open ended madam closed lock in is there okay fund size fund size year what they mean is that fund size can be increased or decreased so here it is flexible in close ended it is fixed fund size as mr van ketit said only 2000 units is what he Yes, Mr. Van Ketit says two thousand units issue. I will issue. If you want more, go in the second mar secondary market. But that is not the case here with us. So it is flexible fund size, but it is limited, fixed in case of close ended. And last is this uh, investing ways. This I will teach you probably later on. But here you can invest whenever you want in by getting into SIPs and systematic investment plans. You can invest. whenever you want howsoever you want but 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 in case of fixed uh, in case of close ended can you invest any time no you just have to invest one time lump sum money one time lump sum money based on so much many points that we have done you tell me which one will be more popular which one will be more popular one time lump sum money in case of close ended which one will be more popular uh, open ended or close ended think and tell obviously open ended everybody wants liquidity in today's scenario and 90 to 95% of mutual funds in india in today's scenario are open ended you guys did right are open ended got it got it so that's how the system works so so lock in liquidity fund size investing ways price based on nav that i will explain you limit your unlimited number of units your limited number of units are we clear everybody till here because now if i say anything it will go overheads so i just want to ask so far so good logically 
with the flow all well yes should we take a short 5 minute break refresh ourselves and come back it's a more better things so just to give you a whole perspective of what we did before break we started with understanding of our monetary system wherein we understood that how the whole market functions then we realized that yeah we also want to invest but we don't have that time nor do we have the professional knowledge and so a lot of people like us came together pooled the money and then started investing sir will we get to know what shares they are investing in yes sd siddharth has asked sir suppose if i uh, subscribe to some mutual fund i take units of some mutual fund will i come to know where that mutual fund is investing every single penny you will come to know that much transparency sebi asks for the mutual funds to keep that much transparency so here then we thought that chalo let's pool up the money and invest collectively here whatever return we get we will give back to the investors but a certain percentage of professional fees will be deducted and that is how came the concept of mutual fund in the year 1774 by mr ven katich who told people i have time i have professional knowledge invest in me give me some fees and i will ensure that you earn good returns and i will pass this returns to you but if you want to invest there is a specific time period called as the close ended fund over a period of time people realize that they want more flexibility and liquidity giving rise to the concept of open ended funds introduced in 1924 by massachusetts institute of technology in boston and then obviously there was no looking back for the mutual fund industry so all i hope we are clear with all of this part can we take a short break yes so i am now giving you a 5 minute break and after that we will again continue with where we paused are you excited to come back after the break to understand more things awesome probably before we end the session we'll also be solving a one sum as well chalo let's see see you all after the break anything else you can ask me and we'll catch up after the break for sure